One of my favorite stocks is Brookfield Renewable, and I've owned it for a long time. It's been a big winner for me. A lot of investors are really interested in it. And if you think about that space where other companies like Next Year Energy Partners participate, this company's had a tough year, its stock is way down. Brookfield Renewable, you factor in that nice big dividend, and it's going to finish the year probably going to be up by double digits. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. I'm continuing in my series of year-end videos, taking a look at some of my favorite stocks, different parts of my portfolio, looking at how they did. Brookfield Renewable I'm going to focus on how do I think this stock is going to do going forward. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, go to our special link. Go to fool.com forward slash the smattering. Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. You'll definitely want to check that link out. All right, let's start this video off how we have a lot of the other ones we've done this year. And this is the stock chart. It's December 18th as I'm recording this. So we've still got a little over a week left in trading before we wrap up 2023. But barring something catastrophic or some extremely good news that moves the stock a ton, it's probably going to finish the year more or less where it has so far. There's two tickers, BEP, Brookfield Renewable Partners, and then BEPC, Brookfield Renewable Corporation. They're economic equivalents. They're the one-to-one, -one, the ownership of the same business, the same assets, the same percentage of the assets. One is just a corporation, so that's easier to own like in your 401ks and your Roth IRAs and other taxable tax advantage accounts like that. And BEP, of course, is a partnership. So taxes get a little more complicated. Just wanted to explain, that's why there's two tickers on the screen. But again, you see, it's been a pretty good year. And another stock that's had a pretty bad year and that's Next Era Energy Partners. A lot of people are looking at these companies, trying to decide, okay, is this the time to buy Next Era Energy Partners on the dip? What's the future look like for Brookfield? Are these Brookfield stocks going to do the same thing Next Era did? A lot of questions investors are asking themselves. I'm going to do this first. I'm going to explain the difference between the Brookfield Renewable Businesses versus Next Era Energy Partners. On the surface, they basically do the same thing. They finance and own renewable energy projects. Brookfield Renewable got its start owning, owning hydroelectric dams, mostly in Latin America. That's how the business was initially formed. And in the past five or seven years, it has really jumped heavily into wind and solar. Bought some really great assets at a really bargain price a number of years ago. The costs for wind and solar have come down so much. It's become more competitive. They said, hey, we can really make money here. And they've really gone hard into growing their wind and solar portfolio. And that's going to sound a lot like Next Year Energy owns primarily wind and solar. They did own some natural gas stuff. They're in the process of selling that off to pay off some of their debts and some of their other obligations. Brookfield Renewable, they're really focused pretty hardcore on wind and solar because the market opportunity, the growth potential, the opportunity to make profit because the price structure of that market is really favorable. Now, there's a couple of other things that are a little bit different with Brookfield Renewable versus Next Era Energy Partners. Brookfield Renewable doesn't just do the big utility scale projects. That's still the core of the business. So you think about having these giant projects, these big wind farms and solar farms, producing the electricity, selling the electricity either to regulated utilities or to large power consumers. By and large, most of their customers are going to be regulated utilities. Those utility scale projects, that's a big core part of the business. Brookfield Renewable also owns some distributed solar. Now, what is distributed solar versus utility scale solar? So you think about commercial solar on top of rooftop solar on top of a, a warehouse. Maybe a company puts the solar up there to offset their power, right? A uh, manufacturing facility might have it. A parking garage that has solar panels on top of it. All that kind of stuff. Chances are whoever foot the bill or initially put it in place, they're a power consumer. They're not a utility. They're not selling the power directly to the utility. They're using it to offset their power. Brookfield has acquired a pretty large portfolio of that distributed solar. So it works the same way for them. They put it all together, manage it, make money selling the power. So that's the core of the business. All right. Now, if you look at Next Era Energy Partners, the stock's way down. The issues that they've had, they're facing a lot of debt refinancing. So they've had to really pull way back off their growth plans. The market, by and large, tends to think that the stock, the dividend is going to get cut. That's why the stock price has fallen so very much. That means the same thing must be coming for Brookfield Renewable, right? I don't think that's necessarily the case. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, let's talk about the parent companies that sponsor the organizations and where their roles come into play. So Next Era Energy Partners, parent company, Next Era Energy, the large utility, 70% of its business is its regulated utility in Florida Power and Light, about 30% of it, it's renewable, independent renewable in business, which Next Era Energy Partners 
is a part of that. It's only one part of that. So it uses next year energy partners as a finance mechanism. It's the best way to think about it. They acquire or look to develop these renewable energy projects. They might have started at the parent level. Next year energy develops it. They begin it. They finance it. They build it. Use their nice investment grade credit to fund it, get it done. But then they want to drop it down. They want to get it off their own balance sheet. So they drop it down to next year energy partners. Next year energy partners writes a check to the parent company. And then they use their own debt to get it. Over its history, Next Year Energy Partners has used two different mechanisms to pay for those investments. It's issued debt. That's in the orange line. Debt is up almost 300%. That's about a 4x increase in debt since it went public under a decade ago, about eight years ago. And it has increased its share count 475%. So almost a 6x increase in its share count. What's it done? It's taken on debt or it's issued stock and sold stock to raise capital, use that capital to pay for the asset that it acquired from next year energy, and then reward shareholders by growing the dividend. The problem with that model is because of the fact that the market saw their debt maturities coming up, pretty substantial debt maturities, and management addressed it and said, okay, we're going we're gonna to pull way back on growth. Basically what they've done is they've gutted their growth plans, talked about selling off part of their gas pipeline portfolio. And they have plans to sell another pipeline next in 2025, basically using all of that money just to pay off some existing obligations. They're not really going to have a bunch of cash left over from that. So they're paying off that and then eliminating their 2024 acquisitions to fund growth and eliminating growth equity needs until 2027. In other words, the whole issuing stock part of this, they're basically saying, we're not going to, we're not going to do that anymore. And it's, it's not a surprise. It should be a big surprise because the stock price has fallen so much. The yield's gone up to double digits. Can't afford to issue stock to pay for some of these deals at those kinds of uh, cost of capital. So basically they're gutting their growth and saying, we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to on our existing, some of our existing facilities to increase the power from those facilities. It's a lower cost way to increase your power, sell more power. So that's how they're going to grow. So wind is really the main thing they're going to be focusing on with that. And it's going to give them some growth. But here's the big concern with it. I did a video with Tyler Crow. We talked about this already. So for those of you that watched that video, it's a little bit redundant here, but I think it's important to talk about. Get, you see right here, this is 1.6, 1.8, it's 3.4, $3.4 billion. And then they've got a little bit of some variable interest debt that's going to also be due in 2026. But the point is over the next 30-ish months, it's going to be a substantial amount of the company's total debt profile that it's going to have to refinance at much, much higher Rates. We already saw it refinance part of its debt, $750 million of these tranches here that it just paid off and is refinancing at 7.25%. So it's a 70% increase in its cost of debt on some of that debt. So it's going to see a lot of that because the vast majority of its debt is going to have to be refinanced in the next few years. So how does that tie to Brookfield Renewable? You're wondering at this point. Simply, it exists for a different reason. Brookfield Corporation is its parent company, its majority share owner. And to a certain extent, it serves a little bit of the same purpose as a financing mechanism for these renewable energy deals that Brookfield wants to get involved in. But it's less of a financing entity and more of an investing partner. Brookfield Corporation, its parent company that's a majority owner, and the Brookfield Asset Management, which is its alternative asset management subsidiary of Brookfield Corporation. Their job is just that. They manage money that's invested in large alternative assets like real estate, renewable energy, debt all of those sorts of things that they do. And sometimes they need additional liquidity and capacity. A Brookfield fund may be targeted for renewable energy and they may have some assets that they can acquire. Brookfield Renewable can provide some of the capital and then they can manage the asset too. So it exists for slightly different reasons, similar but slightly different reasons than, than Next Year Energy Partners exists for. Here's a big thing. It's a better laddered debt situation at, at Brookfield Renewable. So I'm going to highlight this line right here. And this is the combination of debt principal that they'll have to pay each year. Again, this is vertically in each year going through 2027 and then thereafter. So you see, now you might see these numbers and say, well, it was pretty similar numbers to the numbers that we saw over at Next Year Energy Partners. Brookfield Renewables, like eight times the size of Next Year Energy Partners. So it's substantially larger. So what I want you to see is how well laddered it is. It's about a billion dollars a year. And then the vast majority of their debt's not going to start maturing until 2028 or after. Now, also, it's not on the, the slide that I just showed there, but the interest rates, the Brookfield Renewables paying right now, are they're a little bit higher than what Next Year Energy is paying on some of what it's refinancing. That's not great today, but it does mean that as interest rates have gone up, that they're not taking on a substantially larger increase in, in interest expense. As a matter of fact, from a, just from a pure cost of capital perspective, this is dividend yield. 
Next year, energy's partners' dividend yields over 11% because the market, like I said, is pretty convinced that they're going to have to cut their yield. It doesn't feel very secure about it. Look at the yield for the two Brookfield Renewable, you know, 5%, 4.8%, 5.1% yield. Issuing stock for Brookfield Renewable to raise capital, to pay off debt, or to acquire assets is still a reasonable thing that it can do right now. That is a massive advantage that it has because number one, the market kind of believes in it. You look at those debt maturities I showed you, the debt's maturing at pretty reasonable levels over coming years and the cost that it's going to have to assume to, to refinance that debt. Now, I think one of the reasons that it's gotten to this point is that Next Year Energy Partners has been extremely aggressive about growing its payout. And Brookfield Renewable, their target is lower than what they've actually delivered on. So they've tried to be reasonable about that target by not growing the dividend as fast of a rate, have a little bit better available cash flow and not being at as much risk to have to cut their dividend. So all of that to say this, looking at these businesses, thinking about Brookfield Renewable, how it's done, thinking about balance sheet, cost of capital, how its debt maturities are structured. Looking forward, what do I think for 2024 for Brookfield or Noble? Honestly, I think it's probably going to just be another similar year. I mean, I'm not just not making a prediction about the stock price. I'm talking about the business. They're going to pay off some debt. They're probably going to issue some stock, maybe take on a little bit of debt to make some acquisitions to grow. They've been really good with their cost of capital, been extremely disciplined as buyers. They're not buying from their parent company. So no conflicts of interest that you have there with a drop-down company like Next Era Energy Partners. So I think by and large, Brookfield Renewable is incredibly well positioned going forward. And whatever the stock does in 2024, I think the business is going to exit 2024 just as strong as it entered 2024, which is to say very good thinking about the long term. I think if you hold it five plus years, I think you're going to get really good returns and I think depending on what the market does over that period, I think you've got a really good chance that this is a stock that could continue to beat the market over the long term too.